Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, everybody. I have a funny hair going on here. Okay, welcome to live. I am so excited about today. So I will help you with the basics so that you can like have the freedom to do whatever you want. So once you are disciplined with the basics of the iron, you can create basically any curl you want. Okay, so let's go to curling discipline. Okay, so let's know your iron. This is your curling side. This is your straightening side, okay? So when you see this approaching your head, you're ready to straighten. When you see this approaching your head, you're ready to curl, okay? So that simple difference and knowing that simple difference is all you need to know. Now I'm picking up my iron really funny, but I just wanted to show you this angle. Okay, so let's go from there. How do I hold my iron? I hold it with my thumb behind the light. This light is the power button. Let's turn it on. It turned on to, it remembers where you were last time. So we were at 300 last time. Let's go to 325, which is one of my favorites for curling. 350, 375, and 400. So know that the more curly you want your hair, the higher your heat can be, or the slower you go when you're on a lower heat. My hair holds curl really well. So at 325, I can get like a looser curl um, if I go up higher, I tend to get like a more curly curl and I don't like over curling my hair right now. So that's why I like a 325. So when you go from there, let's always put our fingers on the like recorder part of it. Okay. That's a new one. I just made that up right now. <laughs> I've never said, have you ever heard that before? Uh -uh. So like hot cross buns, play those right here. Always remember your fingers should be right here. Okay. Unless you're curling on someone else. And then we'll talk about that later. Okay. So fingers here, thumb here. Always, always, always. Now, let's approach our hair. How do we approach it? We know that this is the curling side, we know this is the straightening side. So approach with the curling side to your head. How do you section? I like to section vertically. I like to section from top to bottom, pinch, and then you've got your nice vertical section, okay? And it's not too thick and not too thin because you controlled that as you were sliding down the hair, right? So like, if you had a thick piece, you would have your fingers that far apart, you know, and so the closer you start them together, the thinner your piece will be. So I want you to know that no matter where you hold your section, like what part of your head you're holding your section from, I want you to hold it forward. Okay, not up to this, not up, not back here, not over here. I want it forward, okay? That is the direction I want you to travel. Do you see how I have that forward? That sets you up to curl really well or straighten really well. Whatever it is, this is, this is your foundation, okay? So now I wanna take that whole principle of pinching, grabbing, pulling forward, and apply it to the back. So with the discipline to section your hair in the middle, pull it all forward, and then you can go ahead and take your first piece, okay? Your first piece, bring it forward. Oops. Okay, now, when your section is flat like this, not pinched, not twisted, not rotated, okay? We have a lot of tendencies that we've held in the past from doing hair that creates these kinds of movements and, you know, I want it flat and forward, okay? I know that's anti other curling irons. It's very different than other curling irons. So let's go with that, okay. Then you're gonna bring in the curling side. You're going to close, rotate forward, okay? So you're rotating your hand back and you're rotating the iron forward. And then you're just going forward towards your mirror. Now, a couple of things. Don't over squeeze your iron. There's no need to squeeze it tight. It just works off of heating and cooling, not tension. You do, do not need to squeeze it tight like with flat irons and flat iron curling. It's a lot less work for your wrist. It's a lot less work for your fingers and your grip. So the people that have arthritis and things like that, this is very good for you. Um, so just be conscious of that. Okay, so then throw your piece over. Don't overthink it, just throw it over your shoulder. Next section. If you brush it out, you see how it really flattens the piece? That allows me to 
do even a piece this big if I wanted to, okay? So if it's brushed through, you're not gonna get knots as you're going through the hair. Now, if I'm in a hurry, I will brush it all through first and then I'll just take my sections and I, and I will go through like this. When I'm curling, I'll show you. So I'm gonna do a really big section so I won't get as much curl up at the top because you can see this is bigger than my plates. See, my plates don't cover that, or like the hair covers the whole plate. So it won't curl really close to the top. If you wanna curl very close to the scalp, take out this top section and make it more the size of your um, plate of your iron. Okay, we're gonna go in, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna push forward. And so right here, I usually drop when I take a big section and I just start and regroup the piece and that's okay. You can do that when you, you'll see this curl still turns out fine even though I did that. Okay, so you can see how the big, huge section, I mean, look at the size of that section, everybody. Like that is a huge section. Look at how big that <laughs> curl is. So that's what I love about this iron, which is allows you to speed up your whole curling process because you can curl huge sections if you choose to. And if you don't want them that big and looking like that, then just pull it apart and then throw it back like this. And then it'll cool in place because where hair cools is where it stays. So a quick trick to not squeezing too tight is move your hand down on the iron. It's very hard to squeeze too tight when you're holding from way down here. That's like something that can make you, you know, like just force you to do it. The other thing you can do is just look in the mirror and watch how when you push this close, like you can kind of see and get a feel for it. It's just muscle memory. So let's go in. Let me get this stray hair out of the way. Uh, yeah, so that was it. They wanted to know tension. Yeah. And see, like a lot of this falling out has to do with the way I like to curl. See how open you can see my iron is? And that's why I tend to like let stuff fall out, but watch how this still will kind of create a curl and this will just lay in with the other hair. It's still getting heated, so it can lay in with that hair and get curled. You saw, even with all of that, because I'm disciplined about all the rest, this will come together for me. Okay. How do I do forward facing curls? Okay, on the right side, this is going away from my face. I'm gonna take this and switch it up so I can. Okay, right side curling away from my face, right side curling towards my face. So see what I did different? I'm taking what I do over here on the left side and applying it over here. Same thing. So I will take that and apply it to the left side and show you. See how that's a forward facing curl? This curl goes back over my shoulder, this goes towards my face. I will do one over here and show you the same thing. I'm gonna be undisciplined about this one and I'm gonna do it right here. Forward facing on the left side. So we're gonna go in. This is the right side curling. This is the left side curling. This is how you apply the left side to forward facing. And this is how you apply the right side to forward facing. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this position and I go across my body and then I close and rotate. So the rotation never changes. I'm always doing that same wrist rotation. My wrist should always be in this straight position, which is like one of the huge game changers about this versus flat iron curling, right? Like flat iron curling, oh my gosh, that was a horrible curl. Ah, uh, is that okay? okay. So flat iron curling like is very hard on your wrist because you have to create tension. Right here, it's like you're curling the ribbon with a scissors, right? And you like, have to create the tension that gives it the pull to create the movement. What this iron does is it gives you the heat and then it pushes into the curl. Okay, what are left side disciplines? Let's think about that. Left side disciplines. Make sure you're up over your, shoulder, over your head, okay? This may seem awkward at first, but really watch, watch what it does. So see my wrist right now? Like I have that Michael Jackson thriller hand. I see my light in the mirror and then I close and I rotate my wrist to straight. So your hand, your wrist is super awkward at first. Like, 
I mean, the position becomes very comfortable after you learn it. But when you're first trying, you're like, what, what, what is going on? I'm never going to be able to twist. But all you're doing is untwisting your wrist from contorted to straight. Okay. So whenever you're traveling, you should have your wrist straight. But when you're starting, your wrist, wrist is contorted. It's like the opposite of curling, right? So when you go in curling, you go in with your wrist straight and then you go into contorted. But we start contorted and then go to straight, which means the longer, the longer segment is not clamping the hair, the longer segment is actually doing the hair. So we stay uncontorted longer, whereas with curling, you stay contorted longer. <laughs> okay, so let's go in with discipline and get my curl back like how I want it around the face frame. Okay, all right. Yes, I like that curl. I'm just curling back from front to back, even though I really like the discipline of curling back to front. It just is such a game changer, it really is, but I'm pretty good at sectioning my hair. Um, so I can see exactly where I curled and where I didn't, minus comments. I'm not very good at seeing over those, but I know my hair well enough to be able to do this. But I see a lot of people battle, you know, trying to find what curl section. I see them like searching and searching. So if you learn that section from set center, put it all forward, then throw it over your shoulder. Like it's such a game changer for those of you who section like this or, you know, are constantly searching for pieces learn that technique it will save you probably years off of styling eventually like throughout your lifetime like it's it's a lot of time that that takes out of your styling so let's go in we're going to make sure the curling side is facing our head how do we do that well first the light in the mirror see how i can see it if i'm going with the straightening side there i can't see the light even if I start like this and, and I'm trying to find the piece of hair and I slowly unrotate my wrist to straight, then I'm not going to see the light. So just make sure you can see the light. Make sure your hair is forward. You know, that section is forward. I have a vertical section. I pulled it forward, it's brushed out. I close and rotate. The faster I rotate, the faster my curl starts getting created. So if you're a slow to rotate person, your hair, your curl will start lower, which is okay, it's just, know why that's happening. Um, this is like a one of my favorite because I like to be um, lazy about doing my hair. I like my arms to be comfortable the whole time. When I'm curling these lower back pieces, you know, okay, so curls on this side, curl this way. Curls on this side, curl this way. But if I do this <clears throat> lower section in the forward facing curl, this will just merge with these over here at the bottom middle, okay? So like why, why do I need to be adamant about this one that meets in the middle curling this way? It just doesn't matter. So I'd rather have my arm comfortable and create wave under there and create the same curl that would have been on my right side but make myself very comfortable doing it. So. I think that's a huge hack, especially for people with a lot of hair, like such a game changer. So if I wanted to do that same one, right? So I did it like this. How would I do it to have the curl the other way? I would do it like this. Do you see how this is a little less comfortable? Right? I mean, it's still comfortable. It's still not holding your hand back there forever, but you can see how it's just a little less comfortable than doing this. Let's talk about creating curl up at the very top. When you get, like I am literally touching my head with this, and then you close and I start rotating before I move. So my movement is the rotation. So I'm not squeezing tight. I'm just barely closing my iron enough to get that heat going there. And the top takes a little bit longer to heat because it's newer hair, it's more dense, it's less damage, all the fun things that make it a little more challenging to create curl. Now you see how that curl starts right away. Learn the twirl, it helps you a ton, okay? It will, it just sets the curl in place to cool. So let's learn the twirl. 
close, rotate. Okay, I like to kind of straighten this piece out. Now, watch my left hand. I catch it in between my thumb and my pointer finger, okay? And then my piece is instantly there. I don't have to go searching for it. I don't have to do, it's just easy. It's just caught. And then I just take this and I know my curl wants to go away from my face on this side. So I just take it and twirl it like that one time. I see a lot of people do it a lot of times, not necessary usually, just one time. All you're doing is sorting the curl and then letting it get the curl up closer to the top. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you next year.